It's been almost five years since the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft has received an update. That's a long time. To put that in perspective, the last time 2B2T updated, I still had hair. While the rest of the Minecraft community is getting excited for the upcoming wild update and all the fun new features it will provide, 2B2T will now be seven versions behind. It's almost like playing two completely different games at this point. So of course, the question. Is 2B2T ever going to update? Is it even possible? Well, the answer is not only yes, but the server is now the closest it has ever been. The entire original map, which is over 14 terabytes in size, has been running on a modern test server for a few weeks now, and it's been a ton of fun. From a developer standpoint, the fact that an 11-year-old map can run so smoothly in the modern versions of Minecraft has been seen as a major achievement, especially since only a few years ago it was said to be impossible. I had the chance to play this modern version of 2B2T, and I was blown away. The reason I'm making this video today is because we need to discuss how this modern update for 2B2T is actually crucial for its survival. If something goes wrong and the server is unable to update, it could result in a slow, painful death for this historic wasteland. So I'll bring you up to speed on the major progress that has been made with converting 2B2T to the latest Minecraft update, and then I'll explain why this update is so important for its survival. It's an exciting but uncertain time, and a lot of you watching aren't actually subscribed, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now let's get right into it. A couple of weeks ago, a shocking announcement was made that 2B2T's entire map was now available to play in the most recent version of Minecraft. This testing server would be separate from the main 2B2T, but all player data would be carried over. If you logged in, you would still be in the same place as you were on the main server. The community's initial reactions were overwhelmingly positive. The server was not only able to handle a large amount of players, but it did so surprisingly well. It didn't take long for players to build new bases on the test server, and in true anarchy fashion, griefing quickly followed. Other than a few differences such as death messages being disabled and a slightly more aggressive anti-cheat system, it was practically the same 2B2T experience that people both love and hate. The community was excited over all the new features, and as you can imagine, I too was excited. I eventually logged in for myself to try things out and see if it lived up to the hype, and I can safely say it did. I quickly hopped onto another highway and made my way out to brand new chunks as quickly as I could. It was amazing, seeing the new terrain, experiencing all of the modern game mechanics like swimming, exploring deep underground. It was probably the most fun I've had on 2B2T from a gameplay perspective in a very long time. If you play vanilla Minecraft frequently, you're probably already used to these features, but for 2B2T players like us, the novelty of it all has yet to wear off. I actually had to stop myself from doing too much, so that when the main server updates for real, I would still find joy in many of the new features, like digging for netherite, creating a riptide trident, finally starting work on a base concept I've been sitting on for years. There are a lot of plans. I can't imagine the amount of work being put in behind the scenes to make the server run like this, because even just two years ago, people were saying this was impossible. But the success of this last phase of testing has made me realize something. It is now more important than ever for 2B2T to receive this update, because if it doesn't, it's going to be in major trouble and for a few reasons. Let me put things into perspective. 2B2T updated to Java version 1.12, the World of Color update, on July 21st, 2017. Since the server is over 11 years old, that means it's spent almost half of its life on this single version of the game. While this limitation led to an explosion of creativity and innovation in the community, it has now led to our first major issue, player exhaustion. So many accomplishments have been achieved in this version of Minecraft that the community is simply running out of things to do. Let me give you some examples. All world borders in the overworld, end, and nether have already been reached manually. The server has been pushed to its limits with game-breaking exploits even with the most unorthodox of items. 
the PvP meta has been refined to become the quickest and deadliest it has ever been. In-game businesses have been used to generate real-world money. The spawn region has been terraformed over and over and over again. Massive obsidian artwork has been created in the sky to the point that it's become a meme. Almost every single travel exploit has been used and abused multiple times. Thanks to item dupes, many players have every single item you could possibly want. The hunt for 2B2T's Farlands has continued for years with absolutely no results. And don't even get me started on the no-com exploit that made mainstream news. This server has been beaten into the ground harder than any other that exists. While there are still creative ways for players to make new concepts as we've seen recently, most of what can be done has been done. The player base is exhausted. So for 2B2T to receive roughly six updates worth of content at the same time would allow for a new explosion of exploration and creativity. It would be like getting six years worth of Christmas presents on a single day. But if the player base remains exhausted, they will start leaving in greater numbers, which would lead to another issue. Running 2B2T becomes too expensive. Because of its massive file size and the hardware required to make such an old map run smoothly, keeping it online is not cheap. The priority queue system is the only way the server makes any money. New players are practically required at this point to keep things interesting, but if the active player base gets small enough, there will be less incentive to purchase priority queue. That means the server would have issues raising enough funds to pay the upkeep costs. 2B2T's map has become so chaotic that downgrading the hardware is simply not an option anymore. While having no queue does sound amazing for being able to play on the server, it won't mean anything if there's no server left to play on. Now at this point in the video, I'm sure there are some tinfoil hats thinking that the server's admin, Housemaster, must have convinced me to make this video, or that I'm secretly on his payroll, yada yada yada. None of that is true. I'm in the dark just like everyone else, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I've been a 2B2T player for almost 9 years at this point, taking part in player events, documenting them on YouTube, it's all been very enjoyable to me. But outside of hunting for bases, the actual day-to-day -day Minecraft gameplay on 2B2T has been really stale for me for quite some time. There have been so many updates in the past 5 years and we've missed out on pretty much all of them. Playing on the test server made me realize just how much fun a modern 2B2T actually is, and how greatly it is needed to revitalize the community. I know many inactive players are patiently waiting for the update to become a reality. The fact that the impossible has been achieved, and the update is actually within reach, has made it more clear than ever that bringing 2B2T to the modern versions has become crucial for its survival. Now, there is something you can do to help 2B2T. If you want to be part of the modern testing, I've included the IP of the test server in the description below. The more people that can join, the better, as this will mean more realistic testing. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and follow my socials. Take it easy, FitFam, and keep your fingers crossed.